Hello. Welcome everyone to this webinar. It's my pleasure to uh, introduce Spring 3.1 today. This is a, a work in progress, so I'll give you insight not only into what uh, has already been done, but also into what's coming in the course of the next few months. Spring 3.1 is uh, an interesting challenge for us here uh, in the Spring Framework team because with Spring Framework 3.0, we created a foundation for so many um, things to come that in Spring 3.1 we are we are basically taking a pick of what we want to deliver in 3.1 release, but it's at the same time very clear um, that there is plenty of things to come in the follow-up 3.2 as well. So we had to pick and select, and this is exactly. This selection is exactly what I'm presenting to you today. For a start, um, I just I'll give you a very quick summary of the main themes that Spring 3.0 delivered, because this is such an important foundation for 3.1, uh, and many of the things in Spring 3.1 only really make sense in the context of Spring 3.0. So, if you haven't um, if you haven't researched Spring 3.0 in uh, in any degree of detail yet, I very much encourage you to do that at the same time um, that you are following our Spring 3.1 milestones. All of the things that Spring 3.0 introduced are very relevant today in the 3.1 world, and 3.1 feature set is building upon that foundation. So we'll start with a quick review. We'll spend um, almost all of this, this webinar almost all of the coming uh, 40 minutes on Spring 3.1's key themes. So I'll give you an overview um, split into two parts. So we'll look at what M1 um, will contain, the M1 release coming tomorrow. Um, already has plenty of stuff in it. So we'll start with uh, that half of the feature set and we'll, we'll, we'll spend the remainder on what's coming in in two. All right. Let's start with review. In Spring 3.0, we really created um, a foundation for the powerful annotated component model, uh, the most powerful annotated component model in the industry, I would even say. Uh, but in particular, the annotated component model that we build our programming model on for the years to come. You'll notice in many ways. Uh, that we have a strong annotation focus now. We are trying to make the best of what annotations in the Java language allow us to do. At the same time, we of course support um, other ways of being definitions, such as like melting definitions. Um, but lots of uh, research and development, of course, is in the annotation-based world. And Spring 3.0 presented a strong foundation, um, a stereotype model, composable stereotypes even. SB factory methods, um, also known as configuration classes, uh, factory methods, and historically known as Spring Java config. That's all the same thing. It's a uh, an important cornerstone um, that Spring 3.0 finally included in the core. In terms of um, alignment with uh, standard annotation, standardization efforts in this space, uh, Spring 3.0 had a significant step as well. It supports GSR 3.30, which is dependency injection for Java, and this is fully compliant implementation of GSR 3.30. So we do pass the TCK. Um, it's actually the first specification that the Spring Core itself natively supports. So other features, just quickly mentioning the Spring expression language. Actually shows up in several places in Spring 3.1 as well. It's uh, not really not, not not really a surprise. No surprises were here, um, but an important foundation for many things that we do, where there's just a concise way um, and a consistent way of specifying short expressions across the framework, but also across the entire Spring portfolio. So you'll find use of the expression language in many projects. Spring security and so forth. The REST support, uh, support for REST, REST for web architectures was an important 
team as well in three ago, and you will see this continued in three that one in many ways. Um, at the same time, we uh, we built or improved the model that we call AppMDC, and the rest support is really closely aligned with this effort, um, an annotation-based MDC variant for the Spring Dispatcher framework. So the the focus on AppMDC is also something that continues in three that one. Well, support for Poker to the low. Um, of course, only relevant to port of users, um, but just mentioning that this was also an important step um, and actually creates the uh, basically the, the world only port the to the based MDC framework out there. Another standardization effort with a strong relevance is JSA 303, which is in validation, essentially a set of um, standard constraint annotations. And uh, standard APIs for processing constraints and constraint violations. And Spring Food Ado introduced support for JSA 303, general support, but in particular integration with Spring MVC. All right, uh, the Java E6 topic is in, uh, basically a bit of a summary. Um, Java E6 came out at the same time as Spring Ado, just a few days apart. And uh, of course, Spring Food Ado. Was ahead of its time uh, and was already tracking Java E6 specifications during its milestone phase. So you'll see support for Java E6 level specifications, such as JPA to the low, the Java Persistent API to the low, and Java Services to the low. And of course, GSR 330 mentioned above and GSR 303 also mentioned above are also part of the Java E6 umbrella, despite being independent. Specifications. They are also part of the umbrella. All right. Uh, that's basically the state of the art. Spring through the bill, spring through the build of five as the current release. In spring through the one, we selected a number of key themes where we build on the spring through the build foundation and we improve the story that spring through the bill started um, in many ways. And we're also completing some, some gaps. Some functional gaps, some stylistic gaps in particular. I've grouped them by milestone phase. So um, the first milestone to be released tomorrow contains um, quite a bit of stuff. Um, so this is only really the four main themes in M1, uh, but those four are really important. For a start, uh, there's what we call the environment abstraction, environment profiles for beam definitions. Um, one of the um, well most significant additions to the XML and annotation-based programming model at the same time, uh, but I would even expect that it it will be consumed in a quite XML-centric fashion for a start. So this is actually a counterexample to our annotation focus to some degree, uh, and shows that we are uh, we provide an equal level of uh, of innovation in the XML configuration space as well. At the same time, we have a theme called Java-based application configuration. Um, could also call it Java-based container configuration to some degree because it is about um, customizing Spring container features. It's an addition to the uh, app configuration model that we introduced in Spring 3.0. Not so much about configuring application components. But rather configuring the application container that manages those components. Um, we'll go into more detail on that in a minute. Uh, manga, but really nice feature: the C namespace, the constructor namespace for XML configuration. We'll see what it looks like um, in a minute as well. It's uh, um, a nice addition and completion of the XML configuration model. A new functional area, or at least largely new for for the Spring core world is the cache abstraction and the support for declarative caching that comes with it. Um, we'll spend quite a bit of time um, just showing uh, examples of what this looks like. Um, there, is a, there is lots of stuff waiting there for you to discover and that can only really show you um, the main entry points. Um, so this is really a new area where Spring Fluted 1 goes into the domain, the caching domain where Spring Core hasn't really gone before. 
Ihnen zu. Um, quickly summarizing because we'll, we'll get into more detail later on anyway. Um, we have to focus on web MVC, uh, customizable processing of annotated MVC handling methods. A focus on conversation management, uh, more sophisticated conversation management than than what Spring MVC used to have and Spring web support generally used to have. There is still the three the low topic. Server three the being an important part of Java E six of course. Um, and Spring three the is perfectly compliant with um, Server three the deployment. But there is no explicit port for Server three the features yet. And there's quite a bit of stuff in Server three the that is a good fit for what we're doing here in the Spring world. So I'll go into more detail on that as well. And finally, we are about to revisit our Groovy support. So we'll go a bit back in time to our LAN namespace that hasn't really seen much um, refinement lately. Um, but there are a couple of ideas of what to do in that space. All right. So much for the quick overview of um, the eight key things um, that we are working on in the Spring framework team. I'll um, go into them one by one now, and we'll just show you um, reference examples of what we are doing there in order for you to understand what the, the point of those things is, what the point of those features is. There is, of course, much more to discover in the details. Um, feel free to check out the M1 release um, tomorrow. And um, of course, the reference documentation contains lots of information. There is also a, a whole series of blog posts queuing up, waiting for you to uh, dig into them, starting with next week. So we'll also do blog posts on exactly the feature set that, we, that I'm presenting here in the course of the next few weeks. The abstraction uh, is, of course, a bit of a general term. Um, what we mean by environment is uh, basically a, uh, a runtime environment in the sense of uh, Deployment environment, primarily that the Spring application is being hosted in. So environments, in this sense, have uh, property sources where you can read the information from. They have the notion of active profiles um, that are active in that environment. The environment is basically a um, fixed arrangement that the Spring application is being deployed to. And in Spring 3.1, we are providing facilities for interacting with the environment in an abstract fashion, and also facilities for automatically adapting a Spring application to the specific environment that it is being deployed to. So both the notion of uh, active profiles uh, and the notion of placeholder resolution are important uh, for what we are doing here. And I'll show you what this means on the next slide. Um, for for yeah, the actual API, if you'd like to check that out in the Java doc, um, we have an, an environment type, which is the, the central entry point, and injectable into user components. So you could say at inject environment and get access to um, the current environment that your application happens to run in. From an SPI perspective, the same package contains several SPI. Um, Interfaces and the property result is the most important one, um, where the source of um, property values, as they are being used for property placeholder resolution, um, is highly customizable. Of course, Spring comes with uh, default property resolution rules. The spec doesn't change in Spring 3.1, uh, but as of Spring 3.1, those property resolution rules are much more customizable than they used to be. 